Right. Good afternoon. I'd like to call the to order the Glens Falls Board of Public Safety meeting Wednesday, July 13th here at 4 p.m. Um, uh, the first on your agenda you have is a resolution to approve the minutes of the June 8th, 2022 meeting of the Glens Falls Board of Public Safety. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, number three is a resolution to approve the annual Lincoln Avenue block party in the city of Glens Falls on Saturday, August 20th, 2022, from 2 to 10 p.m., with a rain date of August Sunday, August 21st, 2022, during the same time, with an expected attendance of between 50 to 75 people. Do we um, do have any questions, or if not, do we have a motion? I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the, the next is a request to uh, approve the Glens Falls Collaborative Fit Fest on Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022, from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. in City Park. Expected attendance is up to 300 people and the attached. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, five is a request to retroactively approve the Glens Falls Collaborative Take a Bite to be held Wednesdays in City Park from July 6th through August 10th, 2022, from 5 to 7 p.m. Tonight is an, an example of it. Uh, with restricted parking on Glen Street from uh, with Bay Street to the Circle. We have a motion. I'll move it. Second. All, second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Five is a request to discuss the proposed taxi cab law that's been attached. Um, and we have um, Councilman Lapham here to discuss um, from the Special Projects Committee. They'd like your feedback on the proposed code revisions as well as the following proposed taxi cab stand locations um, on, I believe, Warren Street, Maple, Hudson, Glen, Bay, Ridge, South, Broad, Elm, and Church. And so that's attached in Councilman Lapham. Would you like to discuss? Sure. So uh, I guess this had uh, started off with uh, special projects in the pre previous uh, council. Uh, I got information from uh, Councilman at large Clark and uh, made some updates. And this gives us the list. I think we we had passed it along before, but maybe not. Uh, but th these are to uh, bring our taxi cab law up to date, and we're adding in taxi cab stands. And the stands were from Councilman Clark from discussions. So we're looking to get feedback on the law changes and on uh, those taxi cab stands. And um, to remind you, I believe you gentlemen may be aware, so I was on that committee um, previously. Um, and. So one of the generating um, thoughts behind this, so we were having uh, the local taxi cab owners um, were, came to us with concerns about the old law that clearly had been a, like a 19, I'll say 50s law, it looked like, um, where it had mandated certain things. Mandated that if you were going to be a taxi cab owner in the city of Lens Falls, that you needed to have an office um, with office space on in our downtown, where today that that need is is not um, necessary or um, cost effective, right? And, and also, there's uh, uh, Uber and ride sharing platforms that are licensed through the state that aren't licensed municipally. So we're trying to get something that is fair for the taxi cab companies to compete with the ride sharing. So the one one was the this law that seemed to say you need to have an office and pay for an office space, and yet other non-regulated people could could offer rides in Glens Falls for nothing. So that seemed like their request was reasonable on that account. Well, they're regulated through the state. Well, they're regulated through the state, and therefore it just meant though that they didn't need an office. Yeah, yeah we don't, and they don't need to follow our our local laws. Right, and the other was around. Um, they were saying, look, um, I think, again, back years ago, we had a, um, a um, when Glens Falls was the center of all of Warren County, I believe, it was kind of said, 
Look, um, anybody who gets a taxi had, had a zone, and, and I don't know where the current law is, maybe Councilman Lapham can tell us, but at one point the zone was like, if you're getting a ride from one part of Glens Falls to the other, you can't charge more than $5. And they were like, wait a sec, we can't live with that today, right? And we, we simply can't afford to be sustained. And there was great debate with, between Councilman Clark and I years ago about this, just so you're aware. Like, we wanted to make it well, somewhat also pulling the fee schedule out of code and putting that in a posted spot so that we can react more quickly. It's the same thing we're doing with the fire department. Yes. Yep. yep. So that seemed to make sense. And and currently in this, what you're what you're giving us does um, is is that all removed and yeah. and put out? Okay. If you guys had a chance to look at this, I have a question. Sure. The uh, taxi cab. I read this real quick. The taxi cab rates are set by the city. Yes. They're even though they're its own, it's an enterprise, somebody else. Right. So, so the license affords them the opportunity to conduct business. They won't have an office. There'll be designated places for taxis to stop and pick up people. What about the fares? The fares are they? Commensurate with Uber. I think uh, the fares are uh, are fares that are in line with what is in place in Queensbury and Saratoga. And by having the uh, fares set on uh, on a fare schedule, we can adjust them as uh, as is necessary. So if the price of fuel goes up precipitously, which it has, we could react to that and give them a more competitive. Uh, uh, fair schedule. So, so actually, yeah. so instead of it being in code, so we wouldn't have to do something through change the law every time yeah. you want to. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. just wondering. I don't know what they charge, but I'm just wondering if it's it's yeah. probably still less than Uber would be, okay. and but it, it's it's more in line with what other municipalities around yeah. us were okay. charging, and so we we didn't feel comfortable with like an Uber ride, and given that a busy time might be twenty dollars, we felt like that might be too much, but at least if we weren't completely out of whack with Queensbury and um, with Saratoga, then we'd at least give them a chance to make a living. How's that? And they're not allowed, if they're, if you run a company in Saratoga, you can you can deliver somebody to Glens Falls. Let's say they want to pay for a ride from yeah. Saratoga to Glens Falls. You can drop them off, but you you won't be able to sit at one of our taxi stab camps unless you register with us. And so that, and that's kind of currently and um, in place. And so we would be able to enforce it and, and make it um, reasonable or, force it a little better right now people from outside communities kind of sneak in quickly pick people up and sneak out before our officers can catch them quite often and so this at least makes it more compatible we were we were making it almost impossible for anybody who did register with glens falls to compete with anybody else and that, that wasn't the purpose question, of question the i have if i'm if i'm a person and i call cab in Queensbury to come pick me up. Why should that person get penalized for coming to pick me up outside the city? He won't, but he won't be allowed to sit at the taxi cab stand all afternoon waiting for a ride. Yeah, I didn't, I get that now. Yeah, so yeah. he's not in violation if he picks Barry up. As, right. long, as, long as, I, as long as I had called him to come, right. to come yeah. pick me That's up. That's correct. Okay. But only somebody who's registered with us and willing to, to live with our our fees that we're saying can hang out in Glens Falls um, and, and actually, you know, take a guy walking up, right? So. Do uh, I got one more question? Do you? I think you do. Do you have to be fingerprinted to drive the taxi cab? Fingerprinted? No. Well, do you do the background, background check? Button? Is there a criminal background check? Not a criminal background. No nope, criminal. When when uh, they when the drivers come and they apply for a license, they apply with the city clerk's office first, and then we run them through our system. Your system? Yeah, through our in-house system to make okay. sure they have to have a, a valid class E or above license, and then we make a determination if they're going to be a good fit based off what we have in our system. But they're not fingerprinted, it's not a full Yeah, but you, 
you at least there's a local yes. criminal check yes. on the guns. They sign a release? Do they, do they sign a release? No, they don't sign a release. They don't have to? No. Okay. And we've denied applicants before because of their record in the city. Okay. Thank you. One more related thing you might, I think I learned, but may have changed since Councilman Lapham retook up the issue, but I believe it would be um, that when they come to register with us, not only are we doing that for the drivers, but we are doing a, like an annual inspection of the vehicles. Is that still still there, Ben? Yeah. 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 We, we currently inspect all taxi cabs that are registered within the city. We do that, we do that monthly. So for the outside, for the outside taxi cabs that were coming in, I think that was the, the plan was to do it, you know, yearly to make sure that their vehicles are up to speed. They have to have their own liability insurance? Yes. And they, are we named, uh, do we have to be named, Mike? It's nice additional. if we're named as an additional insured so that when they do something awful and we get sued that they have to defend us. I don't think we do right now, but it's something we can I look at. I think that would be a good idea. No, we, we, we check their registration to make sure that the registration is yeah. valid. We check to make sure that they have insurance on the vehicles. Yeah. Um, but there's no additional insurance. Okay, well, if you're a sheetrocker or a plumber and you do work for a mall or a city or anything like that, they demand you be named, they be named as an additional insured. It's routine. Right. And I don't know, so it's worth discussing or oh, thinking all about All you have to do is to have a carrier type in Glens, City of Glens Falls. Yeah. In the, in the, in the regulation here, if the, uh, the items are red, those are the proposed changes? Yeah. Yes. I have a question. Uh, how many uh, parking spaces are we going to give up to the trap to the taxi people? So Ben, do you want to talk about requests? Because I wasn't sure. Are you asking for one spot in each of these places? Yeah, it was like it in was the map? Like, like a zone on those ones. I don't know exactly uh, what the zone, what, what the parking situation is on those ones. So okay. I might have to do a little research and get back to you. Look, look, look at the, look at this, you list uh, Maple Street. You talk about this part of Maple Street or Maple, Maple Street up, up going farther out. Okay, this this part of Maple Street right now is rather heavily. You can't find a park street normally on, on right. this part of Maple Street right now. Yeah, you'd probably want to at least designate one of them as. A, so I believe that Ben's going to get you a map of the suggested locations. And then you can decide whether it's worth giving up spaces or, yeah. or not. You just want to make it in a place that's convenient for them to be able to, to park, right? And they're they're appreciating that. And, they, and, 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 and the other thing, my my my, my, my thing, my thing on Church Street. Church Street is so short, with the school there and the playground. To really, and it's only a one-way street. I don't think there's gonna be there's gonna be a spot there for it with a taxi stand. And so these, are the, these are the, the suggestions that, that Jim Clark uh, su uh, suggested to me so I can get, get you more detail. So a map of what the suggested cab, taxi step, cab stands are. Uh, I don't know how many per spot. I, I mean, I don't know if it includes both sides of the street, so. Well, again, Church Street's so narrow. Yeah. You could end it as a one-way street from Maple Street down to Warren yeah. Street. And with the school there and the fence playground after that, yeah. and then the, what used to be the nun's house there in the corner. Yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look like it would, so it's worth, um, when they get a map, he can he can take right. a look at it. Yeah. See? Was that the Queensbury Hotel yeah. where they turn the corner yeah. to go west? Maybe you taxi thing either side of that it's right near the hotel yeah i don't answer. think that would because that's a that's usually moving people are just dropping in yeah and that doesn't seem like there's a lot of parking over on the other side of ridge no. right here, you know, especially on the east side yeah the detail gets important parking spaces are an important valuable commodity to the business owners who are investing in the city agree how many taxi cab companies do we have in the city i think there are two that I'm aware of. Is that right, Chief? Yeah. 
could be. Yeah, pretty good guess. Right there. Yeah. How many cars do they run per shift, you know? It depends on how many drivers they have available. I, I'm not sure of the number. Good question. It's, it's yeah. they, those two that have come to us and asked us for these changes. And it was, again, Councilman Clark's and my committee, and we met several times and looked at it. It was, it was very, we wanted to meet their needs, but we also, um, they had some legitimate concerns. They were like, we're paying for this. We're, we, we have an office and we don't seem to really need it anymore except that you require it. And yet we were paying and we're having our cars inspected. And yet we notice these other people coming and dropping people off and we're like, and they can charge whatever they want. And here we're, we're regarded to a $5 an hour. So what you're seeing is the first draft of, of some a great thing for you to consider. And your questions are fantastic. Ben and his committee can go back and get some answers and bring it back to you. And, and, uh, and like, again, you can look at the parking spaces. I agree with you, Mike. I, it was the, the same kind of thing that I was thinking about with, as we look at uh, today's safety demonstration at, um, with the, the biking lanes. I think that we all would agree that safety, biking safety is important as well as uh, auto safety, right? And, and um, they are of value and we need to look at every street and say, where can we have these things and how many, how many lots or, excuse me, parking spots will, will that cost us, right? But you gotta, we gotta do it. We gotta do it in a way that makes sense because they're valuable. Both are valuable, right? And increasing pedestrian access like bike lanes is important. But at every street, some streets, I think you guys are gonna yeah, need to take the idea that of putting, information. Putting these, uh, of, of uh, specifically naming taxi cab stands is that they wouldn't be just idling anywhere in the city. So uh, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, we can look at how many you know stands per street, and I don't know if they should be dedicated to specific cab companies too. Right. So we can start to look at that and come back, and you guys yeah. can consider the safety. Like, make sense your your thoughts about Church Street being so small. Might be you guys say, yeah, that's probably a street we want to stay away from, right? That's and that's a great part of the process. Same with, I would expect when we, we come back with the findings of the bike um, group, right? The, the, what they find is these kinds of, of bike paths are the most desirable. And then, and then these are the streets we'd like you to consider. And, and then, you can, then we can say at, at what, how much are we giving up and where, and what makes sense. We need to look at the whole city and where we're at with those things. And so I please encourage you as soon as you can, when, if you get done with this, to go over and take a look at what they're doing and what those look like. It's great to inform ourselves because sooner or later, it's gotta come back to you to help us think of how to paint this, uh, that's a, a play on words there, uh, you know, paint this vision moving forward with working with both park, safe parking, safe roads, safe biking, all in the same location and safe pedestrian crossing, right? And that leads to, um, I'll, I'll bring that back. So any other questions regarding this law that you'd like Ben to look up or think about before he, when he comes back? I just want to follow up on it. If there's two companies, I mean, we're, we're never going to get, we might not get it perfect, but we should try for as close as we can get. If the two companies could provide documentation on how many cars they're running per shift, uh, we wouldn't want to have 10 spaces. Right. If the maximum number of taxis running on are say six, for instance. I'm thinking one. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think I'm not I'd rather shoot under. Yeah. I'm only than over. Yeah, one spot. Because right. there should be some. A lot of times they're going to be responding to calls. Exactly. Yeah. 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 This is just to give them some spots where they can stay idle. When they don't they have a run. They won't have their places downtown. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cause I, got, yeah. I, can't, I, just, I can't think of any place on Glen Street where they would be. <laughs> Well, yeah. we, so it's we worth should, looking at those areas and we should ask think the taxi company managers what they want. You can, you can There's no point giving them something they don't even want. Let's see what they want. Okay, That's, that makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Doesn't mean they'll get it. Right. 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 Shoot for the moon. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Any other questions or thoughts that Ben can look up? Um, for you guys to address. Do we have to prove this or something? No, it's just a, it was just a request to discuss it. That's all. Yeah, it's a request for feedback. Right. 
So I got some feedback. You got feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> okay. So um, moving on to new business. Um, and so I wanted to remind you that the bike, um, I don't know, so they, they ended up calling it Take a Bike at, to Take a Bite, right? So Take a Bite's happening tonight in downtown. And then Take a Bike is the where you can drive around the block and, and see what different kinds of bike lanes um, are, are um, available. And, what, and I think they're going to gather feedback from cyclists to say, uh, you know, hopefully come back with the feedback that, you know, 300 people rode bikes throughout it and, and these two types were the most um, preferred by cyclists or we believe are the safest. And then I'm also going to have that group work with Pat Dowd, our community development director, to, um, to look at the 2016 bike study that we did. And then the group, I believe, um, it's called uh, Bike Glens Falls, also has, I believe, uh, some visions they have for where bike lanes could help us be more connected. So we take those, all that information together and kind of come up with a, a proposal to you gentlemen and, and to examine, uh, and lady who's not with us today, but makes sense? She's pretending. <laughs> she's she's pretending. Great. Um, Just to add on that, the demonstration project is going until 7 tonight. Thank you. So, you. so when you're done here, you can move over and take a look. Awesome. And they've tied in the uh, CDPA buses or bikes yes. in the area too. Yeah, there's some extra bikes there. And, and, oh, and also great. the Greater Glen Falls yeah. Transit is over there and showing, demonstrating people how to load bicycles safely onto the bike carriers. Oh, good, nice. fantastic. Um, so, um, I under new business, I have a discussion about public safety. Uh, regarding the Trailways bus station at 2 Hudson Avenue in Glens Falls. So um, I have copies of uh, photos first for you of, um, sorry, Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Can you Sure. Do I keep up? Yeah. Anybody else? Chief? Please? Thank you. One more, please. The other side. Please. Yeah. I think this is a little bit old. It is old, <laughs> but I, it's at least it gives you an, an idea of what the gotcha. street we're we're looking at. Um, so uh, there's so for a number of years, um, twenty maybe plus, there has been um, a, a bus um, station at this corner of Elm and Hudson Avenue. And um, previous to the, the current owner of the Park Street, what used to be the old Park Street Grill, and the, um, I'm sorry, I don't know the actual number of, of, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Elizabeth Miller's developing the building that's on the corner of Park and Elm. I think it's 19. 19. So um, previous to, to um, Elizabeth Miller buying that property, the parking lot that was behind, between the Park Street building, um, where you'll see here on the, also on uh, the photo, so it's both in front of you or up on the screen. So I'll show you this way so you can see what I'm referring to. So this building actually was the home of 42 degrees for years and years. And Elizabeth Miller has now bought this building. And right here outside of the picture is the trailways, and it was both the trailways and the Greyhound bus station. They just recently had a falling out, um, but they both companies were there. And so forever, these two companies would come in and park buses on this lot that was not theirs, but was allowed that the people here didn't like it, but didn't do anything and live with it for years and years, at least 10 or more years. So these buses would come in and they were inconvenient. And they, quite often, um, Robin Barkenhagen told me that he would have customers that would be in his store and they couldn't back out until the bus moved. And they would, sometimes they would lose their mind, but they were inconvenienced. Now, as I became mayor, I was getting calls from um, Mrs. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I had it just a moment ago. Um, Mrs. Miller. And I would get photos. That's a photo taken by 
uh, Mr. Levac, who owns Levac Real Estate right across the street. And, and they would show scenes like this. And I got to be honest, I did not take them extremely seriously because I thought this was like a once in a month kind of happening. I thought once a month there's more than one bus and, and it's creating a, a traffic jam and business has been around a long time and I didn't take it very seriously. But while I was calling businesses in to talk about the DRI and our um, proposed parking garage, right? Um, I, it became apparent um, when I happened to just l uh, luckily have Robin Barkenhagen, Mrs. Miller, and, um, and somebody, uh, maybe Mr. Levac in the same room. And they were saying, no, no, this unsafe situation happens now daily. And it's, it was made worse because if you look at this diagram, right behind the, um, where it says Glens Falls Amtrak bus stop, I don't know if it was Amtrak ever, but there's a barrier that Mrs. Miller put up as she was doing construction. So she found her property line and she put up, go back on to that original thing. So when Mrs. Miller purchased, so forever these guys would just pull into this parking lot and use some of their space and some of her, what is now her space. But she needed to do this construction. So she took Jersey bearers and figured out where her property line is and she put them in. And that made these buses come out here onto the street. Now I realize on a daily basis, creating a really unsafe situation. So now I'll just quickly have you see some of the photos that have been sent to us um, so this is somebody trying to drive down the street um, off of Hudson um, while there's buses there. Go ahead. These buses are on, now on Hudson Avenue, is that correct? What's that? These buses are now actually parked on Hudson Avenue. On Hudson, or no, on Elm Street. This is Elm. And so, oh, Elm Street. Okay. Yeah, so this car is uh, having to back up as another car comes off of Hudson. Can't get around. Can't get around. There's, there's no. It's. And sometimes they'll show us. I don't know if we'll see it on this, but see the trailways, the baggage. So that, so when somebody gets off, they've got to go into the street to open up the baggage, and now they're in the middle of the street, unloading their bags. This is the guy having to back up. He wants to pull out onto Hudson, but another car is pulling out of Hutz, off of Hudson. On the elm, um, so there's one. Oh. Yeah. So we have another. No place to go. So there's another one that actually shows an accident happening, where is as they have to back up. See, he had to back up to let the other bus in. So, so this is happening daily. I thought it was happening once in a great while. And as I was talking to the two chiefs about it, it was Chief Schrammel that was telling me also, can you go back to that original um, picture of uh, there? Yeah. So now with Mrs. Miller, I didn't know this until Chief Schrammel told me, Mrs. Miller's redoing this building, putting millions of dollars. It's fantastic. It's going to be, I believe the bottom floor is going to be restaurant right. as well. And she's moving Doc's restaurant over there and also yeah. opening some sort of food market there. So her, what do you call it, Chief, a water, what, uh, the, the connection that you would... Fire department connection for this. Fire department sure. connection is here on Elm. So as I'm talking to Chief about bringing this subject to you, I believe that this street needs to be, both sides needs to be no standing, no parking. Um, because of pretty much whenever there's a bus there, which is almost always, that this is a, a problem. Um, but here is where a fire, a truck will now need to, when they open, they're getting ready to open this business in the next few months. And when they do, this has to be no standing anyway, because a fire truck needs to be able to pull up and hook up to it to get, um, what would you call it, supplemental water into the... Water to the feed the system. So if there's a fire, it needs to be that way anyway. 
So I also believe that the, my opinion, and I'll let you guys assess it, but as you look at this, I drove today, there were no buses, but there were cars just parked on this side of the street, and as I pulled in, I could drive, no problem, but it would have been tight just for my truck and somebody else going the other way. I, I just think it's, it's too narrow. I, I certainly think it's way too narrow to have parking and, and parking on both sides of the street, but I think it's, it, I want you to consider it. I, I did not realize how dangerous it was. Um, I'm getting photos all the time from these business owners. Um, there is one more thing that when we talk to the trailways, we've been forever trying to get them to relocate. Uh, Mrs. Miller's actually offered them money, a double of what the property's worth, and they just don't seem to be interested in selling. Now, um, that really has nothing to do with, I just wanted you to know about the situation and know that um, they're saying this isn't gonna be a problem anymore because Greyhound is no longer um, allowed, they've, they've had a split between Greyhounds and Trailways. I don't believe that's true though. I believe that even just Trailways with one bus is, creates a dangerous situation. And I believe that, um, that there's, uh, like I've asked Jeff to, to, can he get information for us but I believe you're gonna have more than one trailways there at a time too. I, it's not just because there's two different bus companies. The fact is that this is a bus station in a place of a, you know, in a central business district, probably just doesn't belong there. We've offered to try to help them relocate and forever they wouldn't return our calls. So I kind of am thinking that if we ignore the fact that, that this is the wrong place for a bus station, that this street is unsafe and that you might want to take action. That's why I, I came to you. Well, I think we should put up no parking, no standing, because this problem is not going to go away. Uh, it continues to be a bus station. So what I'm saying is no parking, no standing, east and west side of the street, subject to do we need to do it for the entire section between Hudson and Park? Questions, thoughts? Well, when you, when you get up, up closer to Park Street, though, you've got that, you've got that parking lot where, where the cars go in there for the Domino's Pizza. Domino's, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, they can still pull in, so yeah, you can't they, park they can park there. They can pull in and in, in, get on Park Street, unless they want to go down to Hudson Avenue, depending on where they're going to be delivering here in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I don't think you get problem putting some parking up there on that corner. Uh, where, say it again, sorry? Up um, towards Park. Or on the, on the corner of Elm and Park, up where the other parking lot is, yeah. where they, for that area. But I, I agree with that, that you shouldn't have anything down here on either side of the street. Problem is, is you know, one time, I don't know how old some of these people are here, at one time, on South Street, where Dirty John's is now, that used to be the Trailways bus terminal. Because <laughs> when I I used to ride up the bus, and it would pull in, it was an empty supermarket back there then. They'd pull in there, and that covered section where the bus would come out out on the South Street and unload the passengers and baggage before the war got sold. I remember that, yeah. But. So her business, what, what is she putting in there? Um, a restaurant and um, an apartments up above, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, I think she, uh, so is she, got, is she providing parking for this? Uh, she has parking where the construction's happening now that she'd be able to allow okay. her, her folks to do. And remember, the Park Street garage that people are saying is underutilized is literally boop, right so there. Right? So, so anybody who says that those parking spots are super important literally has less than 50 yards to walk to a parking garage. Well, I say okay. absolutely no parking or standing on the east side between Hudson and Park. And on the west side, I don't see, I mean, to me, I think you should do both sides. I agree. I, I think you should do I both agree. sides and let them utilize the park. Uh, this brand new parking garage has been there. Yep. 
Yeah, let me, Not let only me, that, but any well, let's get to, we're, we're gonna have, you know, the winter time, yeah. you know, that, that needs to be cleared out of there. No, I agree with you. Wait, wait, let, me, let me ask, let me, if we put down, I don't know how this is gonna happen, but that's what we put a, a thing. If we should know park on either side there on Elm Street, yeah. between Hudson Avenue and Park Street, I, right now, I would say that the bus company's going to turn around and they're going to park on Hudson Avenue. If you can't park on, El on Elm Street, they're going to park on Hudson Avenue in front of it. <laughs> so and, that's going to be, and that's going to be where people are trying to get downtown yeah, here. These are individual parking spots. Can that's we right. say that, I mean, this isn't for buses. Okay, we don't have bus parking along our city streets. Mm -hmm. They can take up two lanes, but I don't know how we get around that, but... I think what's going to happen is if they move, if they start park, trying to park on Hudson, there's actually a tree on Hudson Ave that prevents yeah. them from parking there. That's right. So they can't put the bus underneath that tree. Good. Which is, which is uh, otherwise I think they would Good. That's right. park there. Good. And then there's not enough room after that going. going they come east, to the circle. Going east before they get to the circle. And before that, it's a parking lot where Pizza Hut is. And then before that is. So, Where the new building is. Are we, if we approve this, then we, we should notify them that there'll be no parking. That's right. On either side. No parking, no standing. And then monitor it when it goes into effect. Correct. Okay. And yeah. they've got and their, they've is, got their own lot. They've got a lot here which they could manage. They could do one. They can get one, and that's what you see that gentleman pulling into in one of that that yeah. video. Yeah. So they can get one in there. But then they either need to find another location, which we will work with them to do. We want to help them relocate if they wish to. If not, then they can only have one bus there in time and they need to adjust their schedule because multiple buses are unacceptable. We've already gotten a call also from the Greyhound people saying, what can we do? And we're gonna look at it. And I'll speak to the two chiefs and, and like, where can they? I, you know. Some people have suggested off the top of their uh, like Washington Street and maybe over by, I don't know. Uh, the truth is that we'll work with them to try to find a safe place for them to do it. We, there have been people you know, that you know, offered what, Deviation Mall. What's funny is where the tra trailways used to be, the Greyhound was right across the Elm Street where that bar is now. Yeah, they, they used to, that's where the Greyhound bus station used to be. You have a small office there, and the Greyhound bus would park around South Street oh, yeah. and unload. Great. So, we, remember, we're trying to build, we have a grant proposal in for uh, $12.4 million to build a transportation line. And wherever that goes, whether it be on, there's, we've got a parking study that we're doing to look at all of our parking utilization throughout the city. Um, and it's going to explore different options for that parking, um, uh, for that transportation hub. So we are, we have a long-term solution, we believe. We're going to have a transportation hub somewhere, whether it ends up on, in the Elm Street lot, whether it ends up on one of the other lots that, you know, um, some people have suggested over by the Queensbury Hotel and the empty G, uh, TD Bank lot. Um, uh, so, you know, there's people who suggested all, some crazy and some not so crazy, right? I, I'm going to stay out of that. We're going to let the, the study um, grade those options for us, and, and you'll be part of that conversation too, right? But the, in the long term, we've got a solution for them. In the short term, we will help them to relocate if they need to. They will not be able to park on Elm any longer in the unsafe situation. So this... This will, if they accept our help, will help them relocate. If they don't wish to, then they need to adjust their schedule so they have never have more than one bus at a time parked right behind their own place. And and we we've, we've not we've not hurt them, but we've made the situation safer. Anybody thoughts? I think everything you we've talked about makes sense yep. as a short term because it is a short term. That's solution. right. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Do, we, uh, do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the motion is to make no standing, no parking on Elm from Park to Hudson. Both sides. East and west. Both sides. Both east sides. and west. Thank you. Thank you very much.
um, and we will notify them and we'll work with them as best that we if we can get them return our calls. Um, <laughs> you can yeah, keep it. I think this, I think this will probably force a call. Yep, I think you're right. Well, um, next is a discussion on um, complete streets. Um, I believe Ben has put into your packet some um, a, a resolution that was passed back in 2013 by the Common Council. Um, and so, Ben, would you like to talk about it? Uh, yeah, there should also should be a draft complete street <laughs> policy. Uh, so, in January 2013, Common Council passed a resolution saying that we would pursue a complete streets policy and, uh, and appoint a complete streets task force. So I took a crack at writing the policy and that should be in there. And uh, the benefits of complete streets are looking at certain uh, corridors through the city to see uh, where we can identify easy, easier places for pedestrians and uh, bicyclists to have uh, access to roadways and, and sidewalks. Uh, also, Glens Falls School District is a walking school district, and one of the things I'm trying to do with the hospital is to coordinate with the school system about safe routes to schools. Uh, and there's both complete streets and safe routes to schools would open up some grant funding for us uh, to get some of these things uh, planned and then also executed. Uh, the policy kind of goes through uh, that the complete streets task force would report through to the plan to, uh, to the uh, public safety board. Uh, would uh, weigh in on certain uh, certain projects where these kinds of uh, routes to either like supermarkets or schools or you know, civic center, different places where we want where we see a lot of uh, pedestrian movement, where we want to encourage a lot of pedestrian movement. One of the things with complete streets as well is about active transportation. Uh, because those uh, give people more uh, chances for being in better health. Uh, so I think, I believe the policy, the draft policy is in the packet. And if it isn't, I can get that to everybody. I don't think it made it into the packet, but okay. the resolution did. Okay. So um, I wanted you all to know, so, so Ben, through investigation, has helped us. I, I, he probably started out wondering, why aren't we a complete streets community? And then we found out we were. But then no policy. So that by sending the resolution says that we'll set up a policy and a practice that when we're looking at streets, either repaving them or reconstructing them, that we'll look to make sure we're making it as safe as possible for pedestrians, bicycles, and all um, those kinds of things. I don't know how to say it any better than that. Um, so and also uh, transit. So, and so, like, so we have like Greater Glens Falls Transit, you know, the trolley and things like that. We want to make the stops for those, uh, you know, as simple as possible, and then also mobility from those. So some people ride their bike to take the trolley up to Lake George right. or something. So just prioritizing those kind of routes so that we have the safest kind of experience. There's certain movements within uh, national and, and state about reducing. Uh, injuries from uh, from accidents. There's a study that just came out the other day. It's called Dangerous by Design, and it's kind of how the street design has been <coughs> tilted towards the automobile versus pedestrians, bicyclists, transit, and that by doing certain different design modifications and things that we could do, we wouldn't have to do it on every project. But what we would do is we would say hey, this goes, you know, right by the school. We want to make sure we have good infrastructure by the school because we want our kids safe walking to and from school. Yeah, it's, right. it's almost a rethinking kind of, uh, I'm Pat Downey, Community Development Director, and this is one of the projects that the mayor is going to put in my portfolio. Um, the focus really is kind of rethinking how, um, how transportation is designed really to be able to move throughout the city. So as Ben said, it's, it's 
pedestrians, bicyclists, people who are using uh, public transportation, and motorists to make sure that everybody can get where they need to go, that it's safe and direct. Ben, stop me if I'm saying something wrong. Um, uh, and, and considering all of those things when you are rebuilding the roads in the community. Um, so. so is this something that's in progress now? No, see, well, that's the thing. We passed the registration in 2013, but there the paper trail ends. There didn't seem to be an adoption of a policy, and we even look at our practices by uh, trying to research old minutes and stuff, and it looks like we passed the resolution and then nothing happened. So Ben has proposed, drafted a proposed uh, um, policy, yeah. and now, so the next step is we want you to be aware of it. We'll share it with you at the next Board of Public Safety meeting. I want you to look at it and think if it, is it makes sense to you and, and your, uh, you know, ensuring our roads are safe. And then I'm also going to have Pat and Ben, our police chief, our fire chief, and my engine, our engineer, Jeremy Schneibel, all get together and say, what would this, so if this policy was passed tomorrow, how would this change how we think as we, uh, because Jeremy, all the time, we're coming up with, well, we've got a grant right now, we're looking at um, of doing a bike lane and adding, um, uh, adding a pedestrian bridge onto Prines Island and then off, right? That's been in the works for four years. But we need to look at that and say, what would we do differently if we're thinking complete streets wise? Maybe nothing, but maybe some simple change that would make it more of a safe route. Now, so it's those kinds of things we need to look at. What would the policy mean and what processes do we need to put in place? I don't think they're gonna be extensive, but if we don't think it through, if I don't have the department heads um, understanding the policy and then the practices that would follow, so they're following the policy, then nothing will happen again. We'll just have a, a policy. So I'm gonna work on that end. Ben will get you a copy of that, and we'd love your, your weighing in on that. And then we're also going to bring the group, the bike groups that we're talking about back in, because I want to look at a map of the whole city and say, here's where we currently have biking routes, here's where our current transportation routes are, here's where we think we need more of these things and don't. And so all of it kind of ties into this nice package that helps us think about the next 20 years in Glens Falls. We, we have more people on our streets, more people biking. Do you realize, and I don't know that you do, so when we did the CDTA trial practice of the shared biking, that CDTA director, um, Carm Basil, noted that per capita, we have higher usage of these than m any of the other communities that have them. They are amazed at how many people are using the bikes between here and Lake George and the different locations to the point where he, he um, brought more bikes this year in. So we are a biking community, whether we recognize it or not. And so therefore, kind of got to look at it, right? Uh, your point about um, parking spaces are a commodity, but boy, we need to look at what, um, do we have bike lanes too? Can we have both? That's where the, the today's thing ties all this in together. So wanted you to know about it. Um, you've got the, this is the copy of the resolution was passed. No policy was implemented. And I don't believe without misspeaking about anybody in particular, I just don't think we did anything as far as practice. Um, I don't know that as we look at these streets that we're thinking about this and that's what we're looking to change. Okay. So the, uh, out of the policy, we'd be uh, either, you know, we'd be doing something with the task force, and the task force would be uh, coming up with a checklist. And the checklist would be something that we would use when looking at different planning and, uh, and uh, planning and uh, uh, different, like, restriping, where, where there's yeah, reconstruction design. of roads. Design. Yeah, design. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So there'd be, a, one of those words. there'd be a box to check now for, can this be a complete street? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. And should yeah. it be, right? Does yeah. It, yeah. Is it on the map? Is it a place we wish we had a saying that everything has to go through this particular process. Here's a little checklist to see if this is one of those ones. So then when it's all done, you might, when you take your paving, your repaving list, and you know that you're repaving 20 streets a year, you just simply cross track it and go, well, you know, we had hoped to put, well, there's room for, and we'd hoped to put bike lanes on that road. 
Now's a great time when we're done paving it to put it in, Makes right? Sense, yeah. yeah, that sort of, it, it does make sense and, and it just we just never followed through on the policy after the council passed the action. Um, there we go, discussion. Um, that was it, no real resolution there. Um, old business, um, Central Avenue fence update. I don't believe we have them. Do we, Chief, have either of you heard any? I saw it on the agenda today and I went down to the building codes and Google was not there. Will, what, I'm sorry? It was not there today, so okay. I wasn't able to get an update. So we don't have an update for you. We, that's where we've gone to court, um, taking them to court. Our attorneys involved? You know? I would have to find out where it would be. Probably. It's, it's done through the building codes department, so yeah. I don't know where it is. Okay. So next on the agenda is Chief Smith's report. Question. I'm yes, I'm oh, sorry. Um, have there been any further look at or update? You know, previously they said that the last month's meeting about deterioration of the sidewalks at the high school yeah. with the school system starting in probably six weeks. That's correct. So we're the, um, the sidewalks that are cracked that Ben helped us identify are on the paving are on the sidewalk list for this year. The unpaved are not. So um, that wasn't a, a priority at this point just because the list had been created, but um, Ben and you can all decide where um, I'm getting a, a quote, a, a rough estimate without paying an engineer to have our engine, to have our engineer give us what the cost would be to put a parking, uh, to put pay, um, to put Sidewalk. sidewalks where there is none. Um, the main street that was identified is, I apologize, Ben, do you know the name of it? Uh, well, is it finishing off the one on Grant or is it on the... No, it should, well, right now we're just fixing the ones right. that okay. are cracked. So it's probably either Quaid or that, Sherman. Uh, no, I was thinking the one that by the back of the high school, the by the... Uh, that one doesn't have any. No, Clayton. no, that's what I mean, Clayton. that one. Clayton. 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 So what we did with Clayton is okay. he's going to give me a quote <laughs> as to what he thinks it would cost to to put Clayton and then and then we can look at where that falls on the, because we have money and, and we can, um, and we'll be able to consider all the broken sidewalks that we need to fix as opposed to Clayton. We, School has no problem with it. We also want to be able to get money through uh, the hospital. Separate. Yeah. Separate. yeah. So we'll, we'll start to explore that. So um, first though, because we would have to raise the, it raise the area and put a curb right now, it doesn't have a curb. So it's not just yeah. as simple as laying um, sidewalk. You might have to move some poles or if not, build a uh, curb yeah. around the poles. So, okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief Smith, please. Um, I have no new or old business to discuss. Uh, unless anyone had any questions um, about the packet. Uh, Seth French did a great job. He does. Typing up the, uh, pass it on with you. He does. I will. Thanks. Any other questions about the Chief's report? Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That, was, that was the easiest report. Thank you, Chief. Chief Shrambles. Yeah, all I've got for you today, and it can kind of lead to an executive session, um, is we had the retirement of one of our assistant chiefs. Um, so um, that's the third assistant chief to go in a short period of time. So. Um, Assistant Chief Don, John David uh, retired out and he's of age, so he actually was, uh, last day was uh, the 30th of last month. So that opened up one position and then we have, have an unforeseen circumstance where we're probably going to make a couple uh, captain's promotions and then we still have the lieutenant's promotion that you were aware of uh, when we did the interview. So uh, I'd like to call for an executive session to discuss those and sure. that's all we got. Sounds okay. good. Do we have a motion to accept Chief's? I'd accept it. I mow that, but I want to say something uh, while sure. we're on the record. Uh, I had occasion to watch uh, four of your people transfer uh, an injured person from the hospital to her home, a neighbor of mine. And she's an older woman and she was in severe pain. And frankly, uh, your people did a wonderful job. They showed extraordinary compassion and did very nicely for her. They even said, you want us to carry you upstairs? And, uh, you know, I was an Army medic, and I know how hard it is to offer comfort to the wounded. And so I was very impressed. Yeah, yeah they reached out to us the other day. And, um, oh, so nice. Yeah. We'll do yeah. anything we can to help citizens about all. So I'm happy to hear they did, you know, it was appreciated. So. Fantastic. 
So we have a motion to accept the Chief's report. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I also want to take just a moment before we go into executive session. Um, Chief Smith, one of your, um, we had a public um, comment period at the city council last night, and they mentioned um, an officer, and, and shoot me, Megan, can you help me remember? Zach Flewelling. Zach Flewelling. Um, and how he helped uh, with a snapping turtle that had somehow um, gotten into public and was creating uh, quite a crowd around trying to figure out what to do. And not only did he, she say that he saved them from an unsafe situation, but that he gave them an impromptu lesson on wildlife in Glens Falls and, uh, and, and turtles and habitat. And she said it was absolutely amazing. I wanted to make sure that she, um, she recognized him. So would you please pass that along uh, for us? It was, it was great. You know, and somebody steps forth and say they want to talk about four concerns they have. <laughs> um, I, I embrace yourself, right? And to hear, hear that um, was, was fantastic. So please pass that along for us that we recognize him and, and that the community recognize him more, almost more importantly, I think. Um, thank you. So um, with that, I, if no one else has um, any other business, I think we need to go um, into executive session. Do we have a motion? So move. move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And so. Um,